Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with the summer transfer move to Arsenal. Now, uh, international games being played last night, and England took on Costa Rica, and uh, two Arsenal players playing in the game. Danny Welbeck came on as a substitute and scored in the game, and uh, well done to Danny Welbeck. You know what? He's got an absolutely fantastic record for England. He scored more goals for England than Harry Kane has, you know? So every time he's called upon for England, um, invariably, Danny Welbeck really does deliver. And, um, you know, it, it was no surprise to me when he got picked in the uh, World Cup squad. And um, he could be a real key player for England uh, going into the World Cup in Russia next week. But, you know, looking at Danny Welbeck, what are Arsenal going to do with Danny Welbeck? I mean, he only has one year left on his contract. His contract uh, finishes at the end of next season. So Arsenal really got a decision to make on Danny Welbeck. Are they going to keep him or are they going to sell him? And um, his stock may rise you know, because of the World Cup, because I think that he's a player that, although he probably is not going to start in the World Cup, I can definitely see him coming on in games and being that sort of player that can make an impact. And if he scores goals, like what he did last night, his value will go up. He will also start to look upon it and say to himself, well, you know what, I want to be playing week in, week out, because I feel that I can do it at um, a club week in, week out. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with Danny Welbeck. Uh, there's no new deal been agreed yet. And do we keep him or do we sell him? I mean, I'd like to put that out there to you guys. Uh, I know that he's a guy that sometimes divides opinion. He's a, a very popular player at the club and he scored vital goals for Arsenal um, in the time that he's been here. But sometimes been very inconsistent you know he, he can be brilliant one day and then on another day you don't know what you're going to get from Danny Welbeck so how do you guys feel about it do you think we should be keeping a player like Welbeck or selling him I'm going to run a poll on it and I'd really be interested to find out what you guys think my personal opinion on it is that I think we should you know if, if possible keep him I think he'd be a very good squad player his ability to play either left or right or down the middle is invaluable, I think. And, you know, you've got to look on it with Arsenal. We know what we're like down the years. I know we've got two great strikers at the moment with Lacazette and also with Aubameyang. But over the years, we've seen what's happened to us with injuries. And I was looking at it yesterday and just saying to myself, you know what, Aubameyang, Lacazette, Welbeck, and then step up Eddie Nketiah to the team. You know, they could also bring back uh, Lucas Perez. That's another option. But I'd be looking to step up Eddie Nketiah. Um, he scored a couple of goals uh, the, other, um, the other night for the England youth team. Put these guys, that, that four players up front as a uh, sort of strike force. And I'd be happy with that. I, I think that's a, a, a very good, you know, four potential centre forwards there. But what do you guys think? Um, let me know in the comments below and also vote in the poll. The other um, one is uh, Joel Campbell. Played in the game last night. Didn't really make much of an impact on the game whatsoever. But don't forget, he's still an Arsenal player. An Arsenal player that I think has been treated a bit harshly by Arsene Wenger when he was here. He had that one season when he sort of returned back. And I thought he played well. He always gave 100%. And uh, then the following season, shipped out on loan again. And uh, we're being told today that he's uh, agreed terms on a move to Galatasaray. So that he could possibly be on the move out of Arsenal on a permanent basis, but certainly uh, a guy that's never really been given a chance at Arsenal and uh, will figure in the World Cup for Costa Rica and will be their main guy. So um, it'll be really interesting to see how he gets on at the World Cup and whether his stock will rise. Because, you know, this is an opportunity for a lot of players in the World Cup for them to put in great performances and really put themselves in the shop window or for them to be able to turn around to their clubs and say, well, hold on a minute, now I want to be playing. Full stop. Every day, week in, week out, I want to be playing. So World Cup is going to be really interesting. Now, another player that we're going to be seeing in the World Cup, um, possibly, is this player that Arsenal are apparently really interested in. Argentinian, goes by the name of Christian Pavon, uh, currently plays for Boca Juniors in Argentina. 
He's only 22, um, a really, really good winger. And we know that we're in the, in, in the lookout at the moment for wingers. Now, Christian Pavon's representatives have said that um, they've held talks with Arsenal and uh, Arsenal are definitely interested in signing him. Um, however, Boca Juniors, you know, they know that they've got a talent here and they might be looking at it and saying to himself again, you know, he's in the World Cup squad. Let's just keep hold of him for a bit. Let's not let him go before the World Cup. Let's keep hold of him and see how he gets on in the World Cup. If he get, you know, comes on in a couple of games and makes a great impression, price goes up, 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 up. <laughs> and uh, Arsenal been linked with uh, Pavon before, but um, we didn't get the deal done. But could Arsenal be making a move for Pavon to bring him to Arsenal? Uh, the famous words, we have to wait and see. But uh, the link's definitely strong out there for him. Uh, also linked today with uh, Clement Lenglet. Now, Lenglet uh, plays for Sevilla. Uh, again, 22. And uh, he's a centre-back. Uh, had a really, really good season for Sevilla. And he's being tracked by a host of clubs all around Europe. One of those is Arsenal. Now, he's got a €35 million Euro release clause. Uh, seems to be quite standard at the moment for... Um, teams across Europe to throw in these big release clauses on players that have not really even proven themselves yet. But it's almost like these clubs now plan for the future by putting in these release clauses. And as I said, um, host of other clubs uh, looking at him. We know Arsenal, of course, uh, Socrates is going to be coming in through the door as a centre-back. But are Arsenal going to get another centre-back? I personally think they should be going after two centre-backs. Um, will Lenglet be one? Again, um, one that we're going to have to wait and see. Um, and it's going to be interesting, as I said, do Arsenal go for two centre-backs or are they just going to go with a one in Socrates or will be revealed very soon. But Lenglet uh, apparently on Arsenal's radar. Bern Leno, uh, the goalkeeper. Now, speculation has been high on this one ever since the transfer window opened. I think every Arsenal fan knows we need a keeper. Uh, it wasn't a great season for Petr Cech last season and he's been a bit indifferent, as a matter of fact, since he's come in. You know, sometimes he can be really good, really solid. On other occasions, you know, you look at him and he's almost showing his age. Now, this guy, Bernd Leno, um, is a really highly rated keeper and uh, the 22 million release clause, that is how much it's going to cost for Arsenal to, to get this one done, which is not that much. I mean, a lot of people are saying it could cost up to £26 million, let alone the release clause, because uh, Arsenal not the only club interested in him. Uh, Napoli wanted to buy him. They wanted to buy him from last season, but um, Bayer Leverkusen held on to him. But now that Leverkusen have bought in a new goalkeeper, uh, their sporting director, Rudy Voller, has already said, Bern Leno can go. He can definitely go, but it's going to be where he chooses to go. Will it be Arsenal? Or will it be Napoli? Um, again, um, it's going to be really interesting. I think this will be a very positive signing by Arsenal. And again, go towards strengthening the spine of the team. Now, linked to again today with another player, new player to emerge in the links, and that's Morgan Sanson of Marseille. Uh, 23 years of age, um, central defensive type midfielder. Again, another player who had a really, really good season. Really good season for Marseille. Um, last year and um, Arsenal looking at him. Uh, his agent has apparently said that Arsenal and Tottenham have both um, expressed a lot of interest in him. I'm always very wary when agents say, you know, uh, interest has been expressed by this club and that club because, as I say many a times on the show, it's agents getting to work. Uh, it's, you know, they talk up their client. Arsenal are interested in Tottenham, Chelsea, you know. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty smart by the agents. You know, they know they've got a, a central midfield player here. Arsenal looking for a central midfielder player. Let me link my player with Arsenal. Um, <laughs> and the price goes up. Price goes up. Or if I'm trying to negotiate a new deal with Marseille, they've got to come better with the wages because, you know, there's other teams looking at him. Or it can sometimes be a very genuine li um, link it can be that the club has got in contact with the agents and said, you know, what's the, you know, what's the status on your player? Is he, is he looking to stay? Is he looking to leave? So 
You, you can never tell 100% on these. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. I've been speaking to a few agents recently and they've been sort of telling me some of the, the ins and outs of how these deals get done. But that is definitely one of the, the methods um, involved in this whole sort of transfer merry-go-round. Uh, so he's linked today with Arsenal, but who knows what will happen with that one. Again, let's patiently see what develops. Jack Wilshire. What is going to happen with Jack Wilshire? I was down at the uh, Puma launch yesterday for the brand new Arsenal kit and about four or five different fans asked me that same question. What is happening with Jack Wilshire, Robbie? Are, are we keeping this guy or is he going? I mean, there's fans there that are worried about it. The ones that I spoke to, they were quite worried because they're like, we want to keep Jack Wilshire. Jack Wilshire should be the mainstay of Arsenal's team. Jack Wilshire potentially should be the captain. Or Jack Wilsh is the sort of guy we need in there, in the dressing room, um, because he's Arsenal through and through. However, he hasn't signed a new contract yet, despite me hearing a few weeks ago, um, I heard this from pretty good source, that his dad had said to somebody that Jack was definitely signing a new deal. But the new deal's not been signed yet. And you start to wonder, is, is he having second thoughts? You know, there's clubs out there that will take Jack Walsh. The Crystal Palace want him. West Ham definitely want him. And he might be sitting there and pondering, what shall I do? I want to play week in, week out now. I've just missed out on the World Cup squad, probably because I wasn't playing enough. I, I, I want now to be playing every single week. Now, he might have gone to Unai Emery and said, can you guarantee me that? And Unai Emery might turn around and say, well, hold on, no, I ain't. I ain't guaranteeing no one nothing. I'm a new guy that's come in. I'm not Arsene Wenger. I want to take a look at everybody. And uh, if you're good enough, you play every week. If not, no, I'm not guaranteeing you anything. Plus, I'm bringing in other guys in that area. We see that you're looking at this youngster, Yatin Adli. So what is going to happen with Jack Wilshire? Will he stay or will he go? I'm hoping that he stays. I, I really like Jack Wilshire. I think he's Arsenal through and through. And I still think he's got a lot to give to Arsenal. But what do you guys feel about this one? Again... Leave it in the comments below and let me know um, about Jack Wilshire. Stay or go? <sighs> what it's going to boil down to. Um, interestingly, yesterday, talking about football agents, um, they, they had a big meeting yesterday of football agents, FIFA, um, the PFA. They're trying to um, shake up how transfers are done. And some of the things that they're looking to do are quite interesting. One of them that could come into effect this January would be that each club can only have four transactions per January transfer window. That includes if you sell players. So four transactions only. So you could buy potentially four players or you could sell four players. Or if you say, for instance, uh, sold two players, that means you can only buy two players. Or if you sold three players, you can only buy one player. Four transactions only, and that'd be really, really interesting. The other thing that they're looking to do is to um, make the transfer window close at the same time early in August for the whole of Europe. We know that this year, um, all the Premier League clubs agreed that they want the transfer window to close before the season starts. They get fed up of the season kicking off. We've seen it with, at Arsenal so many times. Season starts and everybody like last year, what's happening with Alexis? Is he staying? Is he going? And it destabilises the team. So what they want to do is make it uniform right across Europe at the start of August, um, just before the Premier League kicks off or just before the leagues kick off, window closes. No more end of August stuff. And I think that would be a great, great idea. And they're also talking a lot about a more transparent system where the whole process would have to be put into um, in, is also registered into um, this system which would show everybody involved in the transfer all the agents the club if you know any family members got money every single thing would have to be detailed no matter where would have to be detailed and I think that's a great idea as well so we can see where the money's going. A lot of money, you know, and a lot of complaints are always going out there that a lot of the money disappears out of the game um, and into the pockets of agents and stuff like that. This policy would make it transparent so you could see where all the money's going to. We'd be able to scrutinise it and see because sometimes you would be really shocked to see, <clears throat> excuse me, to shocked to see where some of the money's gone to family members, 
to friends, hangers-ons, agents of taking whopping amounts. I think some of these ideas are, are, are really good. And uh, it's FIFA driving this, their, their new president, Infantano. He wants to clean up this whole murky area of uh, transfers. And the agents are looking like they're willing to do this as well. So I think this would be really, really positive if all of this happens. Thanks for watching the show today. Do not forget, starting from next week, it's all of our World Cup coverage. A bits of it have started already with me and Troops doing um, some of our looks at who's going to win what group. But next week, we're going to be going big on it. We're going to be covering the World Cup as well as all of our Arsenal coverage here on AFTV. So make sure you check it out. Thanks for watching and we'll be back tomorrow.